What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 Series 9 video. Today I'm going to be doing a bit of a discussion video. Uh, not No gameplay today, but I want to talk about a few things in the format. I thought it'd be fun to make a video that is essentially my to-do list and or five Pokemon that I think I want to explore in the format or I believe are underexplored. I'm going to say five underexplored Pokemon in Series 9. Now, as we all know, Series 9 is the continuation of Series 7 rules, so we do have some precedent as to what to expect within this format. And with that precedent, along with some Picolytics information, I've come up with five Pokemon that I want to use and I think have been underutilized within the Series 7 format and could end up being a little bit more relevant in Series 9. So, yeah. If you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications, and answer my comment question of the day. What Pokemon do you believe is heavily underexplored in the Series 7 slash 9 metagame? Also, before we start, I want to say I am feeling a little bit under the weather. My throat has been killing me, so... I, my voice may crack every once in a while in the recording of this video, so I guess get ready to laugh. <laughs> so yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, also, a quick apology for the lack of videos lately. I have finals around the corner, but as soon as finals are over, I'll be able to make more videos. Just give me a week. So first up, I have Kamoa. Now, Kamoa, you might be wondering, why Kamoa? What, it doesn't, isn't Kamoa that Pokemon that just straight up loses to Tapu Fini and uh, Grim Snarl as soon as they hit the field? And I will say, yes but only to an extent. Um, Kamoa is an interesting Pokemon, mainly because of its ability Overcoat. Now, Overcoat is essentially a built-in pair of safety goggles, which will protect you from things like Spore, Sleep Powder, Rage Powder. And as you know, Amoongus and Venusaur are very, they're, they're pretty notorious for putting things to sleep. And uh, Sunroom is a pretty notoriously good uh, composition within the Series 7 and 9 metagame. Now, while it also allows you to bypass you know sleep powder and spore it will on top of that allow you to bypass things like rage powder so it's harder to redirect Kamo with amoongus now what i've come up with is a concept for a set that you can honestly change to be a couple of different sets so what i have here is a citrus berry overcoat Kamo. now this guy has maxed out attack which can honestly be decreased Ooh, there's the first voice crack which can honestly be decreased um and given the same amount of speed at plus one given you get off a belly drum and a scale shot uh this Kamo will be able to outspeed dragapult and then just you know click moves <laughs> you know if you get a belly drum off uh plus a scale shot not only will you probably one shot dynamax mons with the scale shot giving you hit all five uh but you're gonna get that speed boost which will allow you to outspeed everything and then click things like drain punch max knuckle uh max warm wind and poison jab to hit the fairies all those are really cool however you could also switch over to being a throat spray kamoa which isn't too different matter of fact it probably becomes a little bit better uh what you can do is swap this over to be a timid special attacker uh, and rather than Belly Drum, Scale Shot, Drain Punch, what you could actually opt to run is Clangorous Soul, which will not only, you know, give you a boost to most everything, but also activate your Throat Spray. Uh, and you can run Clinging Scales. And I honestly would keep Poison Jab, and maybe we could actually switch that to like a... What's it called? I forget what it is. Not, not Naive, but like the physical version of that. What was it? Minus Defense, Plus Speed. Uh, I can't find it. I can't find it. I, I, I can't see. Uh, I don't know where it is, but you know, minus defense plus speed uh, and switch over to Aura Sphere. And then you have a similarly powerful Kamo, uh, mainly just like with the initial boost, you won't be able to Dynamax and get as much damage off, which is why I prefer the physical variant. Uh, however, I do think that Kamo being immune to things like uh, powder and just being generally bulky and being able to set up is actually really cool. You can pair it with the Clefairy which should allow you to get things off a little bit easier and also benefit from the friend guard. I think Clefairy Throat Spray Kamo would actually be pretty insane in the format, uh, given you have a way of dealing with things like Tapu Fini and Grim Snarl. And it isn't that hard to slap on something like a Celesteela or any other Pokemon that synergizes well with Kamo that deals with those two. Uh, so yeah, I think that Kamo is pretty underexplored. I'd like to try it out soon. I do have a Belly Drum Kamoa team that's coming down the pipe, uh, but it's kind of iffy right now. I'm still optimizing it. Uh, it's probably going to be the first one I use in the upcoming format. Next up, we have Tapu Koko. Now, we did see Tapu Koko do a lot of work in Series 8 as an Assault Vest Electroweb Pokemon uh, on Kyogre teams, especially coming out of Japan. A lot of them liked running Assault Vest Tapu Koko. However, I think that Tapu Koko in general isn't actually too terrible of a Mon, uh, even within this format. 
mainly because not only does it naturally outspeed Thunderous, which is really huge, but it also gains a uh, benefit from not being able to be put to sleep by Venusaur and having access to Brave Bird to be able to go for max airstreams. Uh, and the Electro speed control is nice as well. U-turn is pretty cool. Uh, but actually, if we look at it as like a 1v1 versus the Thunderous, let's uh, pull up Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko, AV, let's pull up a Thunderous. Picolytic set. So granted both of these guys Dynamax, uh, Tapu Koko is actually be dealing considerably more damage with its Max Lightning to the Thunderous than the Thunderous would to it, which not only that, but it also deals with Urshifu pretty well considering uh, it resists everything Urshifu wants to go for because of its fairy typing. So granted the lead off Tapu Koko versus Thunderous Urshifu, uh, it actually isn't too bad. And because you're running Assault Vest, you can probably take a hit from Nihiligo as well. And with, you know, the right support, you'll be perfectly fine versus Nihiligo. That's the case with most Pokemon. I think that Tapu Koko could actually be pretty interesting within the format. However, it is, you know, it, it, it gets kind of outshined by Regieleki. Regieleki has access to dual screens. Regieleki has access to... It, it's it's the fastest Pokemon of the game, period, pretty much. Uh, it has access to Electroweb. It has access to really powerful moves with Transistor. And while Tapu Koko has access to Electric Terrain to uh, boost its, <laughs> its uh, Electro-type moves, uh, its moves actually aren't quite as strong as Transistor Regieleki. So that is something to keep in mind. On top of that, you want to be careful with the Regieleki matchup since you might end up powering them up. So Tapu Koko is an interesting Pokemon that I want to try out at some point. I'm just not sure on what team I would use it on. Now, Buzzwool is another Pokemon that I think deserves a little bit more exploration. And I actually do have a team with Buzzwool on it that I used pretty successfully in a couple of like showdown room tournaments and also just on the ladder. Uh, Buzzwool is interesting because with an Assault Vest on and that massive HP stat, it can actually take hits in the special side pretty well. You have to be really careful versus things like Thunderous uh, because of Max Airstream, which is why I thought that if you were to use it anywhere, you could use it as an alternate to Urshifu. Not only that, but it also makes it like not only does it like work as an alternate to Urshifu, but it arguably improves your nut core matchup in case you know you're facing another nut team uh, because it straight up walls Urshifu. Urshifu cannot knock this thing out for the life of it. So basically, you have you know you're, you're going to sacrifice your matchup versus um, a couple of fairy types because you are adding on. Well, no, I guess it's you know just as weak. But you are sacrificing your matchup uh, because the max airstream does considerably more damage to a bug fighting type than it would to an Urshifu. Uh, however, you know sacrificing that isn't really too much when you consider the fact that versus opposing nut teams, you you sort of have an advantage. Uh, it has access to some really cool moves. Max airstream off a of dual wing beat does a ton of damage despite you know being one of the weaker variants of max airstream. Uh, Thunder Punch is great for knocking out Tapu Fini, and the fact that this thing gets beast boost every time it KOs something is actually really huge. Uh, Leech Life can turn into Max Flutterby, which is great not only because Leech Life itself recovers HP, but also because Max Flutterby will decrease the power of special moves, increasing the longevity of Buzzwool. And Close Combat, of course, is a very strong move, but I think you're mostly running that for Max Knuckle to uh, increase the damage output of this mon. So yeah, it's interesting. I think that Buzzwool has a lot of potential in the format. I know that um, a couple of players, notably, uh, I believe it's pronounced uh, I am love. I think that's their username. Uh, they've used this thing to great effect, and I think that it's it needs a little bit more exploration in general. I guess that's the point of the video, but you know what I mean. Now, Gigalith is a I would say it's a controversial take, but I have seen some po some people online say like, yeah, I agree with you because I did make a tweet about this a while ago. Gigalith is arguably better than Tyranitar in Series Nine, and here's why: in Series Nine, we have to deal with Glacier on Trick Room teams. Now, not only does Gigalith not have a times four weakness to fighting moves, which Glacier can exploit by having access to close combat, but Gigalith also hits one point stronger, 135 as compared to 134, and it sacrifices some special bulk, but the fact that it isn't getting one shot by close combat, and the fact that it naturally underspeeds Glacier, look at that, and also naturally underspeeds Amoongus, means that you'll be able to deal major damage with this Pokemon, especially if you pair it up with something like Dusclops and go for like a Bulldoze into a Max Rockfall. This thing becomes insanely bulky when it Dynamaxes, and it also pairs well with Sand Rush users, whether you want to use Excadrill, which I would actually advise against, you're kind of doubling up in your weaknesses there, but I would say notably it does really well with Dracovish. Now Dracovish got access to uh, the Sand Rush ability in uh, Series 7, uh, and because you are losing out on Strong Jaw, I would honestly just recommend um, Choice Band since you're going to be locking yourself into Ficious Friend most of the time. That also allows you to run Adamant Nature and still outspeed everything at plus two. So here's essentially what happens. Gigalith 
is your primary trick room attacker. And you sort of have like a pseudo sun room. Uh, and if you lead off with like Dracovish, you can get Gigalith on the field to set up Sandstream, allowing Dracovish to go for a choice banded uh, Ficious Wrens. And the reason Dracovish is so nice next to Gigalith is because Dracovish can actually ward off Incineroar switch-ins, which are detrimental to Gigalith because it definitely does not like being intimidated. So that's actually really huge. Uh, it also deals with Landorus, since Landorus is a primary intimidator in the format that can do, it can do a lot of damage to Gigalith if it Dynamaxes and goes for a Max Quake. So these two paired together are actually really strong. And I have made a couple of teams center around them that I think I'm going to use very soon once the format drops. I have this like Dracovish, Gigalith, and um, Dusclops team that's just been taking lives on the ladder. So I definitely think that Gigalith needs to be explored a little bit better. Um, it is kind of weak to Venucol because, you know, max over, not max overgrowth, but max vine lash is going to be doing a lot of damage, but you can compensate for that. You can run like a thunderous with safety goggles on your team. Uh, and that pretty much fixes the matchup entirely if you play it right. So that's kind of cool. The last one I would say is my most controversial take. I think Reggie Drago has some semblance of viability. I'm not going to say this is a Pokemon that needs to be used. It's, it's like an underrated gem, but I will say it's, it's got potential, you know, it's got potential, uh, mainly with adrenaline orb. I feel like you can get a lot of use out of Regidrago's bulk, granted it has really low defenses. It has really high HP, so you can, honestly if you wanted to, you could like lower this and just make it full supportive. Uh, but what I wanted to try out at some point was an Adrenaline Orb set that basically I would run it next to something that, you know, they'd be like, oh yeah, I need to intimidate that. I don't know, maybe I can run it next to like a Landorus or I would, I would honestly say like Cinderace wouldn't be a bad idea because I have seen White Herb Cinderace be pretty useful. So granted that, you know, I lead off White Herb Cinderace plus Reggie Drago. If they go for an Intimidate versus the Cinderace, they're going to activate the Adrenaline Orb, which actually gives me an, a Reggie Drago that outspeeds Dragapult at plus one, which is a pretty good speed tier to hit. I would prefer to run Modest Nature instead of Timid because I want that extra damage. However, this thing does insane damage with Draco Meteor and Dragon Energy at that point. You're pretty much forcing a Dynamax on top of that. And... If you don't even want to like, you know, click powerful moves, if you're mostly interested in making sure that your Cinderace survives, you can go for a Breaking Swipe. Breaking Swipe lowers the attack set of the foes. It's interesting. I feel like I'm sounding, sounding like Verlissify just giving off trash movesets, but to be honest, there isn't much else that this thing is capable of. Like, I, I try to look into different ways to use it. Um, like, yeah, I guess you could run, you know, Choice Specs or Choice Scarf, Dragon Energy next to like Whimsicott, and that would deal a lot of damage. Uh, but it doesn't fix the fact that you have no way of using this effectively against Tapu Fini. So I don't want to use it as like a primary attacker. It's very rare that this thing would Dynamax. However, the fact that it can get a speed boost and then, you know, pick up major damage with Dragon Energy uh, because it has 150 base power and hits both opponents and gets boosted by Dragon's Maw. I think that's interesting. And I think it's something that people should check out at some point. Um, Breaking Swipe is just ma mainly tech and Draco Meteor is a nuke to hit whatever you want pretty much like Draco meter does solid damage to most pokemon if we look at reggie drago here uh reggie drago here it is here's the adrenaline orb set and let's just pick out a pokemon that is pretty bulky in the format we'll, we'll go with incineroar like standard ish incineroar non av though let's go with a uh, picolytic set yeah like citrus berry incineroar a non-dynamaxed a Dragon Energy is just going to be dealing 50% to that and whatever's next to it pretty much. Basically, you're like cutting the health of two Pokemon in half immediately. And once you already, you know, get that off, obviously they're going to be wanting to target that to make sure that it's not going to be able to go for another Dragon Energy at max power. You can start clicking Breaking Swipe and just lowering attack stats. There's a lot of options here. You can click Draco Meteor to nuke one thing. Uh, and yeah, like obviously you wouldn't want to Dynamax this most of the time. If you were forced to Dynamax it, it has some pretty decent longevity because of the fact that it has 200 HP. Like that's kind of crazy. I'm not saying it's like the best option, but I'm saying it's a, it's a Pokemon that I think should be explored a little bit more. But yeah, uh, let me know what you think about my takes in this video. You can say my takes are trash. I don't really care. It's, it's whatever, you know, I, I want some feedback, but I want to know what Pokemon you guys think are underexplored in series nine. What Pokemon you guys want to explore yourselves and yeah. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.